Hello, hello. Today I will be featuring a ship that honestly has been, has been out for a while now, which is the Hood. Um, I've been quite split in my opinion on the Hood. There are things I quite like on it, uh, I like the fact that it's very, very tanky. Um, but that only really applies when it's angled. When it's angled it gives a fairly slim profile and it's able to tank a lot of shells and it feels nigh indestructible. Well, not really indestructible, but uh, combined with its large HP pool you can just take a huge amount of beating and you can just tank and tank and tank. And this is of course a very positive effect of a battleship. The issue really is that uh, all this tanking doesn't really reward you that much and usually it requires your team to capitalize on the fact that well you are absorbing all these hits which is also quite rare but i mean it is a obvious strength that must be highlighted uh, of course sadly the guns are not that good the guns have been an issue in fact the very first iteration of the hood that i played I really, really wanted them to in increase the sigma on the guns because it always baffled me that you go from the war spite to the hood, which is a tier higher, but it feels like your guns are kind of downgraded in between. Um, the guns suffer from high inconsistency, really. You can have some great across the map salvos, as you saw there. Citadel in Aduka, followed by the Nagatog Citadel in him right after, and a very short end for that guy. I mean, you can have great salvos, don't get me wrong. The problem is the lack of consistency. Uh, and for those that have watched my reviews in the past, will realize that I value gun consistency, gun consistency extremely highly. In fact, some of my most disliked ships, uh, like for example, or disliked battleships, like let's say Gneisenau or Dunkirk, uh, stem from the fact that I consider the guns unreliable on them. Dunkirk, 1.7 Sigma, very unreliable guns. Um, the Gneisenau, only six guns with German dispersion, very unreliable guns. And this, my dislike for unreliable guns will, of course, no doubt color this uh, review. But uh, I, when I play a battleship, I like being I like being able to punish bad moves from enemy players. They give me a lot of broadside. I like being able to punish this misplay by the enemy team. And if I if I aim well and I manage to catch someone giving me broadside or something, I like being rewarded for it. And uh, when your guns are inconsistent, these things kind of go out the window and uh, being rewarded for good play or the enemy being punished for bad play depends very very heavily on RNG in instead of your own ability and that I find pretty frustrating which of course as I said will affect my review. Now gameplay wise it is a fairly strong ship but then again I don't think there is such a thing as a bad battleship I mean if we go tier 5 or higher, it's really hard to find something like a bad battleship in this game. Uh, the gun the gun power of battleships in this game, the range and the ability to punish ships is going to be consistently quite strong across the board. There's no real such things. I mean, the New York might be among the worst simply because it's so slow. Um, but I mean, when you get to New Mexico, it makes up for it with firepower. Same with kind of kind of with the Colorado. None of these ships are really bad. They're just on the weaker spectrum compared to the others. I'm giving some broadside here to the Scharnhorst because I really want to shoot this guy sailing around, giving me broadside. I want to shoot one more volley, which requires me to give still give some broadside. Now the Scharnhorst can get some pins on me but he won't citadel me from that distance. You see Gneisen now giving full perfect broadside at 10km. How can I resist such a juicy, juicy target? Yeah, the damage is decent. Um, that's something though that, considering uh, the RNG you can have with this ship, I'd say the damage was actually pretty good. Uh, you will see some examples later on. Some shots taken in, of course these are normal penetrations, and normal penetrations you can heal 50% of, like in all battleships, so it not, it's not really a big deal, because one of the strengths of this ship is absolutely the big health pool. The health pool on it on the ship is massive at 67.7k, 67 
and it allows you to endure a ton of damage. Unless, of course, you give broadside to uh, ships with big caliber, in which case you will just get citadel. So far, seems to be the damage was going pretty well. The, the problem is here, though, that we have no presence in B, and the enemy team is pushing into B quite heavily. I'm trying to keep myself angled as much as possible to mitigate the damage that I take. Scharnhorst at 10km. Trying to push into B. Oh, I should have probably gone for that broadside instead. Two penetrations, no damage. Unfortunate. Um, and one of the things, one of the gimmicks, so to say, of this ship has always has been the anti-air. When they buff the rockets on it with defensive AA boosting um, the rockets instead of boosting the long-range guns. And uh, I will say that it does kind of help the ship in the sense that you don't really have to build for anti-air in any way. In fact, I haven't built... Uh, my regular build on the hood isn't focused on anti-air in any way at all. Because uh, the long range... Oh, well, the if a carrier goes for you, if he tries to use any bombers, he will lose them all in your defensive AA. And usually they don't want to go for you again. Most of the time, in fact, carriers will know that the hood has this strong anti-air and they won't even touch you. So you're kind of safe based on the reputation alone. Kind of like a Cleveland or a Des Moines or Atlanta. You don't really need to build any of those for anti-air if you don't want to. Because carriers will naturally avoid you anyway. There's an example, if I said, of the inconsistency. Gneisen I gave me a ton of broadside at less than 10 km and I did got one over penetration on him and that's kind of the thing, the <clears throat> guns come and go and inconsistency is of course kind of the enemy of having a good performance he's still giving me flat broadside he's turning away slightly but I, I compensated for that, he's, now he's actually selling a straight line and now I got some penetrations Ideally, though, he should be dead by now, but these things, as I said, they come and go. Uh, the short, short and fuse time, I don't really know if I've seen much of an impact on it. I will say that I have kind of struggled getting citadels on battleships um, ever since they lowered the fuse time. Uh, in fact, I've been mo more likely to notice normal penetrations than citadels. So, I don't know if these things are linked or if it's just a placebo effect. It's possible it's also just a placebo effect, but I feel like uh, it's been very hard for me to sit at the battleships in the hood, whereas in the Warspite it's something you do, do quite commonly. In fact, the guns on the Warspite just feel much meatier, but I think it has more to do with the Sigma than anything, because the Warspite guns are so very accurate. Torps coming in, kind of want to avoid those. Maneuverability-wise, the ship is very fast. Uh, it also has a qu it's 30 I think 32 knots so it's it's a very fast battleship it also has a very fast rudder shift in fact it's so f the rudder shift is so good that you don't even need a rudder shift module um, the issue it has is really the turning circle the turning circle is massive at 910 meters the turning circle really really bites you in the ass when you try to dodge torps like here eating two torps. I should have probably seen them coming since the Fubuki was there, but I did not expect him to have launched them already. One Urpen, one Citadel, honestly I'll take it. Uh, but I've lost a ton of health to those torpedoes, and now I am extremely crippled. Let's see if we can finish him off, since he's giving us a flat broadside. And three Urpens. Okay. Is this enough? Or will it hit the island? One proper penetration. Is the Blisco gonna YOLO me? Um, this, uh, my team is kind of collapsing around me, which is of course a problem. There's a ton of DDs surrounding me from every side, including the Blisco in front of me. Trying to finish off this blocker since I don't want him torping me. In fact, I'm reversing just in case. There's also a Colorado on the other side of this island. Problem is, I am quite surrounded by ships everywhere. Now, in terms of gun RNG, this is one of my better games. And uh, looking at my average damage in the ship, it really hasn't been that impressive. Um, the, the average damage tanked has been very, very high in this ship. 
probably one of the highest of all my tier 7 battleships. Um, but in terms of damage, it's really hard to get some sort of consistent damage in the ship. Well, consistent okay damage, but getting any sort of high numbers is quite hard. And in fact, looking at my games, I tried to find a game where I had a devastating strike. And I was like, have I actually even gotten any devastating strikes in this ship? It's, I have a very hard time remembering a single devastating strike in the hood. And devastating strikes you'd expect to be quite common in a battleship because, you, well, especially at this tier, you only need, really need to get two citadels or something like a Nuremberg or a Königsberg or um, any of these Omahas or whatever. But I don't have a single devastating strike going in. In fact, uh, all I have is, uh, well, there are no devastating strikes because, once again, it's very hard to land two citadels at once on anything with this ship because of, once again, the gun, the gun inconsistency. No, I wish this Emil Bertin would show himself, but the Fubuki smoking himself up happened to smoke him up as well. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it is a problem. You might notice that I'm running fire prevention on the ship, and that's because when you run this huge... When you run, run, play with a ship that is this large and is already naturally tanky, uh, I kind of want to maximize the tankiness, which I consider one of the strengths of the ship. So by running fire prevention, it becomes even even better in that sense. And if you have to blow your repair on a torp or a flood or something, then you're unlikely to really get punished uh, with fires afterwards because of fire prevention. In fact, I consider it a pretty key skill for this ship in general, especially if you, if you see how large this fire area, where the two fires were, uh, that's fire prevention making... Um, the two areas of fire in the middle of the ship into one. I'm just forced to stop here because I need to delete this Fubuki as it charges me. Unfortunately though my Farragut misses his torps. Well he doesn't miss them completely but he was a bit preemptive on the torps and it's not enough to finish off this Colorado. My third traverse is also not fast enough to shoot this guy, in fact, even with ex I don't run expert marksman, but even with expert marksman, it would not be fast enough to catch up to him here. And in terms of brawling, the ship simply isn't very good at that. It. It's the hood is not a brawling type of ship. Instant 16k as soon as he gets broadside. Trying to finish off Bliska with my front guns, using my back guns on the Colorado. And you saw that point blank citadel volley. Uh, no citadel and that's something I've noticed a lot. I've really struggled to get those citadel kills in or citadel hits in on battleships in general. My fire from my secondaries does burn him to death and I do get my fourth kill but ultimately um, it was too little too late and we end up losing the game. Now how would I rate the hood? It's an okay ship. I mean, it's a tier 7 battleship, I don't think such a thing as a bad tier 7 battleship exists. Um, but it's really hard to find, that. it doesn't really have that defining strength where I consider it a huge threat. Um, at long range, ships that are scary are ships like the Nagata and the Colorado. They got these big massive guns that they can nail you with from across the map and they do huge penetration and just very very scary. At close range, you've got to worry about the Gneisenau and the Scharnhorst. Um, great Turtleverse, Turtleback, uh, Torpedoes. They are all ex they are both excellent brawling ships. And then we have the Hood. And it's really not a threat at long range, because the guns aren't that strong, because of the lack of Sigma. And if you angle, you can bounce it pretty easily. And not really that big of a threat. And at close range, well, it's so large, it has no turtle bike, it has no torpedoes. It's not really a threat for a brawling ship either. And all the tankiness goes out the window if you get the broadside on it. So you can punish it extremely easily. So where exactly is the strength of the hood? Well, the strength of the hood is the tankiness. And sadly, that's not a very effective thing to have in this game, especially since it's only tankiness when you are angled. If it was overall tankiness, that would be one thing, but when it comes to just being tanky when angled, but lacking the ability to punish ships while being able to do so, um, it becomes significantly less strong. So, I mean, this game, looking at the basic XP, a pretty nice chunk of basic XP. It was a loss, though, and... Uh, 
I did the average damage here per shell is quite good. This one only 1.4 million potential damage, which is very low for the average hood game. You can end up with racking up a lot of damage in this thing. So do I consider the ship worth the pretty insane price Wargaming asks for it? Not really, no. Unless you're really a big Royal Navy fan or you really want to do the missions which give slightly better crates and are slightly faster with the hood, I don't really see much of a reason. Um, if you want, I mean, if you want to have a tier 7 premium battleship, then the Sharnhorst is still fantastic. And if you want a tier 8 one, then the Alabama is great. Even the Turpits is quite good. Um, different roles for those two ships. But the hood, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'm not. It's not really my type of ship, and uh, the inconsistency of the guns really do drive me wild, uh, like insane at times. So looking at the average damage, the Scharnhorst, I'd say with the Scharnhorst, I'm averaging a good maybe fifteen twenty k higher. That's probably like fifteen twenty percent higher than I do in the hood in general. So. It's a pretty average ship, and despite all the gimmicks they try to put in on it, like the shorter views and the rockets and all of this, ultimately it's just a tanky battleship with pretty mediocre guns, and there's not much else to it. Anyway, let's move on to my recommended build. Right, as usual, I will start out with the modules. Not really much to talk about since you can't exchange any of the modules, but consumable wise, in priority, uh, get the premium repair first, or yeah, repair followed by the premium heal. I call them repair and heal, but obviously they're called damage control and uh, repair party, but you get what I mean. Uh, the difference, of course, in using the premium is not just getting a additional charge, but also a shorter cooldown. If you can afford it, get the premium defensive AA, but that's really only useful if the carrier is focusing you multiple times in a row, which usually doesn't really tend to happen. Upgrade-wise, main armaments mod 1, followed by aiming systems mod 1. Now I use this because I dislike the random dispersion of the guns, but a perfectly valid option would also be running AA guns mod. So you give up the say, a minus 7% you get from this, and you instead have better AA defense. Not that bad of a trade, honestly, uh, but it relies heavily on, of course, there being carriers queuing up at the same time, and they focusing you. Uh, I could justify exchanging this if there's some sort of carrier mission going on which increases the frequency of carrier players then using AA guns instead would be useful but because I already dislike the random dispersion of the guns I do prefer the aiming system. Damage control 1 and damage control 2. The reason I can run damage control 2 instead of steering gears is because th this ship actually has a really good rudder shift time already and uh, what's holding this ship back is the turning circle radius, not the rudder shift in itself. So I don't really see too much of an advantage of using this mod. Captain perks wise, priority one, preventive maintenance. You don't really have any planes, so you don't gain anything from direction center. Uh, this is probably the most useful one. The second perk, adrenaline rush, followed by superintendent, give you that additional heal. And I would get Concealment Expert first, because otherwise you're spotted from the moon and being able to have at least some form of stealth so we don't get hammered as soon as you spawn is really useful. And follow it up with Fire Prevention, uh, not just helping against carriers, but helping against all the HE spam that tends to get focused at any large battleships. Uh, once you have Fire Prevention, I would probably follow it up with Vigilance, and finally, jack of all trades. Now there's some options here, you don't necessarily need to go jack of all trades. Other options are expert marksman, not, not a bad option. It will only reduce your turret traverse from uh, 36 to I think like 31 point something. So the increase is not that large, but I mean it is an increase. So it might be in your eyes worth the trade. I, I was honestly undecided myself ultimately though. The times where I really really needed expert marksman were times where I was brawling in the hood and in general you kind of want to avoid those situations because the hood isn't a very good brawler to begin with. And uh, high alert is also another option. Personally I went for jack of all trades which is kind of useful in every single way without really having any downsides. But which one you choose is up to you. Anyway, that was my hood commentary. I oh, I my my 
worth mentioning. If you're gonna run signals on this one, uh, adding the India Yankee one, which reduces fire uh, fire extinguishing time, and running the reload time on consumables, both of these synergize extremely well with the fact that you run um, minus 15% fire duration here, and you already run jack of all trades, which reduces mounted consumable time and uh, reduced fire chance. All of this all kind of enhance the tankiness of the ship, and which combined, of course, give you that nice uh, consumable time of 30, 72 second uh, refresh time on your damage control, which is very, very fast considering it takes 60 seconds for a cruiser. So you are almost, your repair module is almost as fast as a cruiser's. Anyway, uh, that was my hood commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.